Hello friends, welcome to Logic Heap. This is advanced series of Python. In this tutorial, we will cover classes and objects. This doesn't require any prior knowledge of OOPs as we will cover it in this lecture. So, uh, advanced series are often considered to be boring and difficult. To make it interesting and more engaging, we are introducing two new friends uh, who are also students of Logic Heap, Amy and Sheldon. Both are very studious and both are neighbors, very competent with each other. They'll be learning with you and asking questions in between. So Amy has this question that why we are talking about classes? Why is it important? For that, our understanding of data types and variable need to be revised. When we write in general in C, C++, when, write, when we write int x, what does that mean? So actually it means that x is a variable of integer type. It also tells us how much space would be needed for storing this x. So generally if we say integers are taking 4 bytes in memory, so it will uh, it will allocate a 4 byte space in memory and uh, when I write x assigns 5, so 5 will get stored in that location. Also this data type, due to this data type we come to know what all operations I can perform uh, on variables of that data type. So for integers, I can perform addition, subtraction, multiply, division. So data type is really important. It gives us so many information about that variable, right? So it tells us how much space is required to store it, what type of values will it contain, what all operations I can perform on it. So it's clear that it's your data type, right? It's your data type, data type and this is your variable okay so after that once we understand that Sheldon now again has some problem he's saying I want to create my own data type just like int where I will decide what variables of the data type will have what operations I can perform on them can I do that so yes you can do it you can do it with the help of classes answer is yes Classes. Classes helps us in defining real world entities. They help us in creating our own data type. So, of course, our, all the real world entities would not be uh, having integer values, would, would not be having string values. They'll be the, a mixture of all such properties, right? So, if we define class car, let's take an example of car. If you want to model it, you want to use it in your programming you need to create its own data type, right? And what all properties will it have? It will have the car name, color, price, model, year. Also, you need to define what all operations will this um, object, will this variable can perform? What all operations can be performed on it? So, it would be, say, start the car, stop the car, accelerate the car. These are uh, the operations and so the objects are nothing but the variable of that data type that you are creating. So Mercedes is a variable. Here we call it object of type car. BMW is again an object of type car class. Audi again an object of car. So uh, the notion is similar data type and variable class and object. It helps us in defining real world entities. It is also called as user defined data type. This, uh, this is also defined as the blueprint for creating real world entities. Let's see how we can create classes in Python. And then using that class, we'll create object. So we are here defining a class of student type. So it will have a property. It will have some properties here. And then some functions defined inside it. So student is our class. So firstly I'll tell you how I create an object. And then we'll see how we define its class. See what I want is I want to create objects of student type. I'll pass the name. I'll pass name and roll number. Right. And. It should return me an object's reference. Okay. 
so that's how amy and sheldon we are trying to create two objects so now let's see how we are going to write its definition how we are going to uh, write the class for it firstly the class keyword and then the name of the class and this colon now we are going to write the complete block uh, which will tell us how the object of that class will behave so firstly this description it's completely optional you can give the description what you are going to write in that class so here i have written defining student class then i uh, i have used a variable student count so what i want from this variable is every time when i create a new object student count should increase by 1 see i have defined three methods first one is double underscore in a double underscore it's an optional method it's not mandatory to write it to define it but if you define it it must be of that name this method is used to initialize newly created object it is not a constructor as many people say we'll elaborate more about it but for now just remember it's a method which we are using to initialize newly created object now when i make request to create an object how i'll make it uh, student the name of the class and i'll pass name and roll number name and roll number i'll pass but here if you see in this init method i have uh, used three parameters self name and roll number no doubt i am passing name and roll number but what is this self this self actually implicitly refers to the object for which we have called this method right so here we have called it for amy so it is referring to amy so what i have written here is self dot name assigns name so whatever name i am passing from here say i am passing amy from here student amy right so amy will get assigned to this uh, self dot name and self dot roll number will have i'm so sorry this is roll number so what happened is uh, in memory an object of student class is created name will contain self dot name will contain amy and self dot roll number will contain the roll number of it also i have written one more line student student uh, student dot student count plus equals to 1 so what it means is every time when uh, we create a new object it will get incremented by 1 the student count will get incremented by by 1 i have also defined two more uh, functions two more methods over here display student count which will simply display the variables value student count and uh, the next one is display student which is displaying the name and roll number for which this method is called so suppose i am writing amy dot display student it will simply a print name and roll number of it now you got how we are creating objects uh, we are creating two objects one for amy and one for sheldon so for student uh, for amy we'll have one object in the memory and its reference will be in this amy right so this amy would be referring to this uh, student object again we'll have sheldon we'll have sheldon and this would be referring to another object having name as sheldon and uh, roll number as this one trip uh, 100002 also seen in the previous slide uh, like if we want to invoke these methods we can invoke it using the object amy dot display student so it will print all the information of amy uh, for sheldon sheldon dot display student it will display all the uh, information about sheldon so this is how we invoke methods using object one more thing that i wanted to point out is this student count variable this is not a instance variable which depends on the object Uh, for which we are calling it like name and roll number are instance variables but student count student count uh, like you can see it's a class variable because for every object we are creating 
we are just incrementing student count by one right so we have written it outside of any method it's inside your class but outside of any methods block right so for the first time when you'll call this um, when you'll try to create object of amy the student count will increase by one now when i i'll try to create object for sheldon it will again increase by one so student count it's a class variable it's not a instance variable like name and roll number